the spirit realm. Everything has a spirit behind it. The world itself is such a big place. The fact that there is a spirit world, which is even bigger than this natural world, is amazing if you think about it. There are so many questions to ask and so many things to figure out about the world. If we keep searching for the answers to this world using our own intelligence or human minds, we will never find all the answers we are looking for. Most questions are not answered merely by curiosity or inquisition. They are answered by employing and engaging the spiritual things. Although the human race has made great leaps and bounds in terms of technological advancements and knowledge, there are still an infinite number of things that we don't know. The spirit realm is a place of tremendous influence because that world affects our spiritual world and vice versa. Now one thing you need to know is that nothing happens by accident. The spiritual world and the one we live in are not mutually exclusive. We see a pattern in the Bible where an action in the natural world has a direct effect on the spiritual world and vice versa. The earlier we understand this reality, the better prepared we should be to attain victory. The Bible confirms this truth in the book, in the book of Daniel. When an angel visits him after an intense 21-day battle with the prince of Persia, the angel said to him, Daniel 10:12, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Notice what the angel said, I have come because of your words. An action in the natural world resulted in reaction in the spirit world. In this instance, the action in the natural world was prayer. Prayer affects the spirit world. This truth is also confirmed in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 through 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The reason so many people fight without winning is because they fight spiritual battles physically. They keep fighting till they are overpowered and subdued by the enemy. The battle we are fighting isn't one that requires arms and ammunition. It's a battle against unseen forces and powers sitting in the highest place of darkness. Only a greater power can defeat that. So what is our weapon of warfare? The greatest weapon we can use to face the enemy is prayer. There is power in prayer. The weapons we possess are prayer, fasting, and the Word of God. God has given us the power and strength we need to pull down the stronghold of Satan and satanic forces. There are two biblical examples of people who wrestled to change their destinies and rewrite their own stories. Jabez was always known to be a child of sorrow, even though the Bible recorded it that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. He was called Jabez by his mother because everything that surrounded his birth was sorrowful and colorless. Jabez went about bearing a cursed name and hopeless identity till adulthood. Nothing was working in his life. Happiness doesn't stay with sorrowful people. But Jabez didn't settle for the reality he had always known about himself. He knew he needed to sort out with God and fight his battles spiritually. He cried to God to change his story and God granted his desires. With our mouth, through prayers and supplications, we can alter things in the spiritual realm for our own benefit and change our situation. God has given us power to change what we don't want in our lives and speak into existence the things we want to see come alive. First Chronicles chapter 4, 9 through 10. 
Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Another person who tapped into the spirit realm and changed his story was Jacob. In Genesis 32, Jacob knew he was a con man and a trickster. He admitted his weakness of self-reliance, deceit, trickery, and asked God for a new identity. He wrestled it out with an angel till daybreak and didn't let him go until he called him a new name, Israel. His life took a completely new turn afterwards. He became a new creation, filled with God's blessings, with a divine purpose to establish the Israelite nation. Genesis chapter 32, 27 through 28. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and you have prevailed. Believers, if we only knew the true power of prayer, we would pray more. And I say this kindly, we don't pray as much as we should. The Bible says pray without ceasing. There is a supernatural power in prayer that the natural man does not know. And our eyes need to be open to the power of a prayer. One prayer can change you from being a man of sorrow like Jabez to being a man who is blessed by God. One prayer can fix your marriage. One prayer can protect your children. One prayer can open up the gates of heaven and shut the gates of hell on your life. Now moving on, what we need to know is that there are powers in the world. Even the Bible talks about principalities and powers in Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's a web chain of demons and satanic agents that have been assigned to different places and people for strategic operations, countries, states, communities, families, and even individuals. We don't see them with our physical eyes, but they are everywhere, every time. They disrupt God's intentions for the flourishing mankind and true justice. We need to understand that everything has a spirit behind it. There are some people that believe that they are just unlucky, but a true child of God knows that there is no such thing as luck. Nothing just happens. There is always something you can't see controlling what you can see. But thank God, God has given us the power to battle the forces we cannot see. As Christians, God has given us power to overcome the wiles and works of the devil and his cohorts. But we have to activate and awaken this power in us to be able to use it. We have to pray and fast without ceasing. Matthew 17, 21. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. A prayerless Christian is a plaything in the hands of the enemy. A prayerless Christian is a defeated Christian. A prayerless Christian is a weak Christian. I say this out of love. As I'm speaking to you right now, I am sure that there is a number of people that are going through situations right now that they don't have to go through. If only they were to stand up in a prayer and say to the enemy and all his cohorts, enough is enough. I am going to stand my ground in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be pushed around by the enemy. They would be delivered. Are you one of those people? Are you a modern day Jabez, a man of sorrow, a woman of sorrow? Here is the answer to your problem. 
Your deliverance lies here in prayer. You don't have to go another year living a defeated life, living a life that God did not intend for you to live. We have been given the power of prayer. Prayer has the ability to change your destiny, to change your family's destiny. Why are you not praying? Whether we realize it or not, our prayers are changing things in the spiritual world. And one of the keys for prevailing prayer is steadfast perseverance. Like Daniel, we must set our hearts toward the Lord and press through until the answer comes. Now I am asking you, why don't you take your prayer life more seriously? Our authority as believers can be fully exercised when we engage in fasting and prayer. Begin to use your authority. Stop allowing the devil to push you around. Stop allowing the devil and his army to destroy your marriage. Stop allowing the devil to dictate your life. Stop allowing the devil to call the shots in your life. People have been asking the question, how much power does Satan have? What can Satan do? And what can he not do? Before we begin, it is important to highlight that Satan is powerful. He is very powerful and you and I should never underestimate his power. But it is important to highlight that he is not all powerful. There is only one who is all-powerful, and that is the Almighty God. Satan initially was created as a beautiful angel, who was one day consumed by pride and lusted over God's authority. This sermon is not about the history of Satan or about how he acquired his power, but more so on the extent of his power. In the book of Job, the Bible reveals to us the relationship between God and the devil. We see in Job 1 verse 6 that Satan has limited access to the presence of God. In Job 1 verse 7, God asks him a question and Satan responds to God. Job 1 verse 7 and 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man? One that feareth God, and ensheweth evil. After God told Satan about Job, Satan replied in Job 1 verse 9 and 10. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. After this, God permitted Satan to go after Job's possessions and family, but not his person. Then the Bible tells us that Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and went after Job. Now look at the resources the devil used to inflict the life of Job. 
The devil used the Sabians to kill Job's servants. Job 1 verse 13 to 15. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabians raided them and took them away, Indeed, killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. The devil used fire from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants. Job 1 verse 16. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from the heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. The devil used the Chaldeans and raided Job's camels and took them away. Job 1 verse 17, while he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels and took them away. Yes, and they killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. The devil used a great wind that came across and killed his family. Job 1 verse 18 and 19. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. All of these things happened to Job in a single day, in one single day. If Satan wasn't limited, he would have done all of these things to each and every one of us. But thank God, Satan cannot do what he wants when he wants. The powers of Satan are limited and he will never be able to do anything in the life of a believer unless he is permitted by God. Satan went after Job and took everything from him, but not kill him, just like God had told him. Satan wanted to do all these things to Job, but God had a hedge of protection around Job, and he couldn't until he got permission to do so. If you are in Christ, there is no way Satan can have power over you, except if God, for one reason or the other, has permitted him to bring storms to your life. God has the ultimate plan. He knows the way out for you. He may permit Satan to touch you, but will use that to raise you higher. He may allow Satan to bring a storm into your life just to make you discover that you are an eagle that can soar in the storm. From what happened in the life of Job, we can see that on earth, Satan can literally affect this world physically by using evil people and even by using Mother Nature. Some of the events that happen in people's lives do not just happen by chance. This is why I am so shocked when people say they are just an unlucky person. Yes, things happen in this life, the rain falls on the just and the unjust, but not on everything. There is a very real devil that goes about to and fro on the earth looking for people to consume. We can see that the angel of God rebuked Satan just by words. If Satan was someone with ultimate power, it would take God to come down and fight him. But the angel just rebuked him with words and he ran. Jude 1 verse 9 Yet Michael the archangel when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. There is an evil idea that Satan's power is on the level of God. It is not. Nowhere does Satan go head to head with God. Other angels typically deal with him. God is in a clear league of his own. I want you to know that just like the angel has rebuked the devil, you can do that too. 
Rebuking the devil is just as easy as submitting to God. The Bible says in James 4 verse 7 that, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you resist him, he has no power over you. He might be looking for whom to devour, but you must know that you don't belong to the world where he can just devour anyone. If you resist him, he will run. This is what you should do. This is what God wants you to do. Stop listening to people saying Satan has power just like God. He has never been like God and he can never be like God. He will never come near you without the permission of God because there is a hedge of protection around you. Isn't that wonderful to know that there is a hedge of protection around you? Around you. Yes you. God has put a hedge around us and when we stay within that hedge, Satan can't get to you. No demon of hell can get to you, no evil person can get to you. Unless God allows him to do so, he cannot affect your life. And even if God allows him to do so, God has a reason why. Just trust him. Psalm 121 verse 7 says, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. He cannot harm you because you don't belong to the world. Job maintained his integrity in spite of the satanic attacks that were thrown against him and his family and his property. We see in Job 42.10, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. God did not fail Job and God will not fail you.